So I'll share a screen here. Share your screen. All right. Tell me if you guys see my screen. Yeah, it came up. It was spinning awesome. for a second, but it's good. Sure can. Awesome. All right. Well, let's kick this off. Um, thanks, everyone, for, for joining. Um, today's going to be a pretty fun day. Uh, you know, uh, Bonds has been sort of talked about for quite a while. It's been in the original papers. We've been, um, we've been uh, testing for the last, I don't know, month or two, trying to sort of refine it to a point where we can start to open the doors uh, and onboard more people. And I think that day is uh, finally here. Um, so yeah, first I, I just wanna thank, uh, uh, thank Hong. Um, some, of the, some of the stuff that you're seeing today or most of the stuff you're seeing today in terms of the design, um, you know, we worked, uh, you know, within the EPs and, and Hong just sort of like grinding this down so that it's as, as clean as possible. But like, there's a lot of uh, passion and love in terms of the, um, uh, the, the sort of uh, um, the platform itself. Um, obviously, it's, uh, it's, it's a work in progress, but we're really happy with how um, it's turned out. Um, we will keep improving it. Um, but yeah, I just want to extend a, a thank you to Hung. Uh, second thank you is, uh, of course, to all the Alpha Bonds. Um, uh, they've been incredibly helpful, incredibly patient. Um, you know, this is just like a brand new product that uh, sort of doesn't have a precedent. Uh, and, uh, you know, there are kinks. We're finding kinks all the time. And um, they've just been incredible to, to work with. And um, you know, um, I'm really excited to see what they they do, and you know, we're going to be thinking about once we get the sort of platform going. There's all this other stuff we want to do for bonds, um, and sort of build on the the sort of like the guild system. And so, yeah, these these alpha bonds are definitely going to be um, cornerstones in these these types of programs. And yeah, we're here to sort of showcase uh, what they've been uh, building uh, in the background and how they are planning to use. And sort of organize themselves. So, the the presentation today will be sort of like an overview of um, the platform itself. We did this a few months back. Uh, we're just going to give you guys a bit of a refresher. There's been a lot of changes since then, um, but um, yeah, just sort of giving you guys an update. And then uh, we will pass it over to the bonds themselves to sort of hear, um, you know, what they've been doing. They've pre prepared some videos um, to sort of, uh, you know. Um, uh, promote themselves and sort of how uh, how they see themselves within the the bond system, and so um, there'll be uh, there'll be a bit of a let's say like a, a film screening or a, like a, a short film uh, sort of expo uh, sort of festival, and then we'll share of course the uh, the um, the videos to to everyone so that they can um, they can you know maybe pick and choose which bond they want to join. So. Uh, let's get started. So this is the the bonds platform. Of course, uh, Bu and uh, Nain jump in at any time, or anyone uh, jump in at any time. But yeah, this is the bond system here. Um, I've already signed in. Uh, this is my paltry amount of prime in the corner. Uh, but yeah, you'll be welcomed here um, at the sort of beginning. Um, players who aren't sure what a bond is will be given some options on you know what what to do so this you click into here it'll take you to the faq it'll explain what a bond is i'm going to skip that stuff uh, i'm going to try to get into more of the the meat here uh, so the first few tabs you go to view all bonds and so these are uh except for except for these uh these guys here these uh these emissaries um uh, these are the sort of alpha bonds. It's the Midnighters, Contagion, Exile, Paragons, Alliance, and Devmons. Um, four of them are here today. Devmons is more of like a sort of invite-only um, sort of European thing. So they they decided, I think Mr. Kivak might be here, but um, they didn't want to <laughs> present. So anyways, these are your alpha bonds. Uh, this is sort of the, the main screen here. And you can click into each of these bonds and um, you know, sort of get a, a 
a bit of a cross section of what uh, what their bond is. So what, if you're looking at like different uh, different bonds and which ones you want to join, you might want to look in here and see what they have. You can then go to their um, their assets and see all the cards that they have available uh, to borrow. And so maybe you have a collection of cards and and you may you know be looking for a specific card. Uh, you might want to find that card within the bonds collection and, and maybe apply to um, to join them. Okay. Um, but right now the ordering system is sort of random. Um, there's really no way to to game this. But in the future, what we'd love to see is like there could be a bond leaderboard where these bonds are sort of battling with each other on a more consistent basis. There could be, you know, bond on bond tournaments within the tournament app. Uh, and uh, there might be like a ranking. So these right now are arbitrary numbers assigned, but in the future, we do see like a circuit where these bonds could be um, battling it out and sort of vying for top rank. Um, so moving on, uh, we will go to, um, we'll go to this bond, uh, this bond, which is the, uh, the test bond for the emissaries. And so you'll notice uh, a few things here. Uh, this is sort of the admin dashboard. Uh, once you um, once you're here, you can sort of see all your bond members, right? So these are sort of the, the folks that are in this particular bond, and you'll see uh, first order, second order, third order. These are just arbitrary names of, of groupings. Um, they can all be edited. So if we go to manage bond here, um, uh, and you go to members. Um, you can click on this pencil, it'll say first order. You could change this to like um, uh, bad players, which is me. Um, and then <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> you gotta do yourself like that. <laughs> uh, you know, good players, whatever you want. They have, it has no bearing on the actual um, sort of like organization, but these are sort of where you would. Um, Go to organize and so if you manage you can start to drag and add people to whatever listing and then uh within the same sort of like within the ardent system we're using the same ardent system in terms of like perms uh, per, uh permissions so if you are a prime and uh you are sort of an admin for the bond if you are a vanguard you're sort of like a lieutenant um and then if you're a legion you're um you're sort of the core uh core part of the bond uh currently just, legions oh, uh, just to clarify <clears throat> it's just the naming convention it doesn't actually have anything to do with like the ardent status yeah. um so if somebody comes in like you know who's a new player and and wasn't part of the original ardent grouping you know that that doesn't matter here it's just really like nomenclature that we're using for kind of like tiers of permissions for essentially like admin editor and user yeah, it's nice and consistent. I like it. They're good yeah. names. Yeah, and you can sort of promote and demote them. Right now, um, legions are unable to um, add new players, but um, vanguards are able to, and then primes, of course, can do everything. Um, I think one of the things that we want to um, stress about this is like um, this system. Uh, like when you're joining a bond, you are like joining a team, and so you're you're um, let's say uh, sort of like at the mercy of um, uh, sort of these team dynamics. So what I mean by that is like when you're a prime, like who you are determining um, is a admin within your bond. Like they have a lot of control or access to um, um, some of the like basically the 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 bond treasury. Uh, we'll go through the payout structure, but yeah, I think like bonds are sort of team oriented and you are, if if you're looking for um, sort of a, a a guild to join and sort of like grow together with the team, like that's that's sort of the, the intent. If you're looking for like sort of the maximum juiced rewards, maybe this isn't exactly the what you're, um, you're looking for, but um, you know, there are sort of like, uh, let's say, social dynamics you have to deal with within the um within the bond system that like you know you sort of have to um sort of uh grow with as as your your bond progresses 
Um, we'll get more into that in a bit, but um, yeah, I just wanted to highlight that uh, when you are joining a bond, you are joining a team. Okay, so let's jump over to collections. So um, uh, this is sort of like uh, the main sort of crux of like what you're what you're sort of going to be using the the, the platform for. And so um, this is your own collection. Um, there's a, a bunch of iconography here that I'll, I'll sort of briefly um, touch on. But a couple of the things that we want to highlight here is there's a toggle over here. Blue means that this is your collection. This is like your cards. And then when you click this, this is your bonds collection. Um, and so this is all the all the cards that all the players within the bond are pooling towards. Um, and these ones are prioritizing um, currently the cards that I've shared to this bond. Uh, we've told the um, we're gonna we're gonna sort of alter this so that it's uh, it it'll share all the cards that you can borrow first. But essentially, yeah, you can toggle between sort of the blue representing your cards and then the uh, yellow representing uh, the full bond pool. Okay, so very important concept here um, that we need to go through because there is a bit of confusion is um, that uh, bonds are completely gasless. So even if you're sharing these cards, you still own the cards within your wallet, right? Like you, you, you have full control. No one is taking the cards from you. Um, but because of that, there is um, some some key distinctions here. Um, your cards are being shared, or or the ownership of your cards are only being assigned to other players within um, the game client. So, uh, so yeah, you completely own your cards. You can you can absolutely move them around. No one is your cards are never at risk of being taken from you. Um, and it's, yes, completely glasses. But uh, what that means is like the there's intervals with which the cards are loaded into PGS to be able to be used. And so currently this is on a weekly cycle. Um, this is causing a little bit of confusion right now because uh, it's a lot different than than what we typically are used to, right? Like you you're used to buying a card and it immediately registering within your wallet. That doesn't work here because um, PGS sort of loads the list of cards or ownership lists uh, every week, Tuesday at uh, 10 o'clock Eastern. So if you are buying a card middle of the week from your bond wallet, you will not see this in PGS. You will have to wait till the next cycle on Tuesday to begin in order to see that card within um, within your, your sort of playable uh, cards. So a way to get around this is you might want to um, buy a card on a on a different wallet and then assign that wallet um, as one of the usable wallets within your parallel uh, parallel ID. Okay, so again, cards are being um, fed through PGS on a on a weekly cycle starting on Tuesdays at ten o'clock EST, and so. Uh, if you are joining um, midway or are you are buying cards midway, you will not see those cards until Tuesday. Okay, and and the, there's a there's a rational reason for this. Um, uh, it's it's just because we can't be piping in um, these borrows every day currently. Um, there's a process to like um, you know how quickly Parallel wants to um, sort of update the the card list from bonds, and so right now we've agreed to a weekly cycle. Maybe one day we'll try to get this quicker, uh, maybe daily, every other day, et cetera. But right now, uh, for the alpha bonds, it's going to be on a weekly cycle. Okay. So once we get through that, this is these are sort of indicators represent these cycles. So these yellow cards means that these are the cards that I have borrowed and are available to me. So if I go into the game client, these cards will be able to be inserted into decks um, and, and playable. Like that's the sort of power of this platform is that you can um, share cards and, and use them in the game. Um, these are cards that I've borrowed currently for this cycle. And if I want to borrow them for next cycle, um, you can see here that like I, I, I this 
pulse thruster. I've borrowed one for this cycle, and I am I really like this card. I really want this card for for next cycle as well. You have to reborrow this, and this sort of indicates that come Tuesday you are going to get this card again. Okay. One of the new features that we are going to be introducing in the next couple of weeks is like um, a, a reborrow toggle. So up here, you'll see a toggle that will say, okay, I have all these cards. I don't want to go through each and every single one of these cards and borrow them again. You'll be able to toggle this and it will reborrow all of these cards for you so that you don't need to click um, all the time. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. I'll, I'll just, I'll hop in and say that it will be a weekly opt-in that you'll need to do. Uh, essentially, we want to avoid the scenario of somebody squatting on cards or somebody just goes away from on vacation and kind of like forgets they don't have them or thought, you know, life happens. Um, you know, we don't want other players who might also want to borrow those cards kind of be waiting while they're sort of, uh, you know, being claimed by somebody who's not utilizing them. Like, yes, like bond admins can ultimately identify this, potentially remove the member, and then they would be back into the pool. But we think kind of like a weekly opt-in is is sort of like a, a good approach and, and pretty balanced in terms of balancing like the needs of the player who is active and who wants to continue to borrow these cards with the you know the idea that there's going to be new players and there is a finite amount of these cards and, and you know if somebody isn't active they shouldn't just continue to get them. Yeah. Thanks for addressing that because that was actually like an immediate concern when uh mentioned there'd be a reboring feature it's like well what about squatting and all that but yeah that's that's a great compromise and i think it makes a lot of sense to do that yeah so that that's coming out pretty soon i think like in the next week or two um just trying to um sort of make everyone's life easier because yeah we're recognizing once we're using this like there's some some folks have a ton of cards and yeah and some people are going to borrow a ton of cards so we want to make that a bit simpler Okay, next core concept is wish listing. Um, it's relatively simple, uh, but yeah, if you're on the bond side here, um, I'll go to list mode. You can see all the list of cards here. Um, and right now, again, this is sort of the cards that I'm sharing, but I want to get to the cards that are um, uh, that I'm um, want to borrow, or let's say that I want to sort of keep tabs on. So let's let me just say let's say this card pirate junker. Uh, let's say I, I this card is available or maybe it's not available. Maybe it's all borrowed. Uh, but you want to keep tabs on this card. You can wish list it by clicking this here. Um, and maybe there's a few others. There's a crew boss. Maybe there's like um um what's another fun card? Erasure, real fun. Okay. Um. Anyways, you, you click all these stars here. And this is just to sort of keep tabs on cards that you sort of have special attention to and you want to make sure that you want to borrow them in the future. So you may not want to borrow them right away, um, but some of these could be your, your favorite cards. Uh, it could be also like um, a way to track cards that you may want to acquire yourself in the future. So you can uh, click on these. Um, these wish list um, stars, and you can unclick them to take them off your wish list. And then it sort of indexes them all so that they are ready to borrow when the cycle starts. So um, uh, you can, yeah, click click through and essentially um, sort of makes it a, a little bit easier to, to borrow uh, when, when it's required. Okay, um, yeah, that's a pretty simple concept, um, but um, yeah, that's a sort of core piece that, uh, you know, um, we hope sees some some usability. Okay, and lastly, let's go through rewards and then we'll start to uh, do the, the, the slideshow. Um, but here are the bond rewards. So as, uh, if you recall going back, um, and I'll work through a, a flow diagram in a second, but um, bond pool claim. Okay, so when you, actually, I should probably just jump to um, this diagram. Can you guys see this diagram still? This uh, in my figure? Yep. Sure. Okay. okay. Can see. So there's a lot of questions about how the bond uh, prime splits. This is the diagram. Hopefully it makes you makes it a lot easier to understand. So when someone is in a bond, you are immediately 
um, assigned as a bond member within um, PGS. And whatever you are, uh, whatever you win, there's going to be a percentage that gets taken out um, and sort of given to uh, the bond. Okay. So let's say I'm part of this bond, I'm earning one prime uh, from playing. Immediately, 5% um, of this one prime earned goes to the sync schedule. This is to sort of help pay back um, the uh, the sort of play to earn pool or the sorry the gameplay pool. So that five percent is just from the jump taken off, and that goes right into the sync schedule. Um, it goes through a few other things like prime sets, um, uh, was it prime drive holders, um, etc. Uh, but for the most part, it goes all to the the uh, the, the gameplay pool. So that's five percent. Okay, from there, we're using this other term called the prime reward, because uh, that is sort of uh, from the gross, 5% is from, from here. And then this 95 then gets split again, okay? Uh, this 0.95, 80% of it goes directly to the player who plays the, the game, right? So if I'm borrowing cards and I'm playing, like that player is still earning the majority of the prime on on playing the game and winning okay so 80 percent is is going to be split off into the player this player is going to claim that prime in the same way that they are claiming it um in the uh currently through gameplay so you'll go to echelon io we will add another um sort of uh section here for um gameplay and so you can claim in the same screen but it'll essentially be um, you'll you'll be able to claim for gameplay as an individual player um, here, okay? So that's the eighty percent. Then from there, twenty percent gets split off into bonds, okay? And so from this twenty percent, ten percent or half of it goes to a communal bond wallet. So this is what I was sort of alluding to by by saying that when you join a bond, you are sort of agreeing to be part of a team this bond wallet is completely communal and the admins will have access to it and so you may um you know uh you may spend this on a number of things you might like use that prime earn to add more seats to your bond um, there are upgrades or costs to sort of keeping the bonds um, growing um, so that could be used for that you could use it to um you know you might want to create a a brand new web page for your bond, and so you might take some of that prime out and pay a designer to to um, to um, sort of make a make a um, a bond website, or you could have like internal uh, um, tournaments, and so you can set up a tournament uh, on the on the tournament app and sort of run a, an internal tournament. Maybe you say like once a month, ten percent of the 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 bond wallet goes to the winner of this. Whatever you want to do. Um, you can decide as a group. It's not a multi-sig, and this is what I, I sort of alluded to. Like the admins have control over this. You guys can vote on like how you want to use it, but an admin can um, sort of add and remove from that wallet freely. Okay, that's where one section goes to, and that is communal. The other pool goes to the lenders. So of the ten percent, uh, sorry, of half of the twenty percent goes to the lenders you are if you are lending cards to players to play um you will get a pro rata share of um the lending uh pool um at during sort of the monthly emissions and so you can claim that so um what i mean by pro rata is uh if you lend 10 cards and let's say um ryan is lending 10 cards um uh but let's say um uh Sorry, th th sorry. That that's actually a good example. I'm lending ten cards. Ryan's lending ten cards. Um, if the if the bond has a uh, one prime in the lender pool, uh, both myself and Ryan will will be able to pull um, fifty percent from that. Okay, these numbers right now are uh, static as we are in alpha, but in the future um, we will give the flexibility for um, for um, the bonds to individually sort of set these numbers. But for right now, in the early stages, we are going to sort of keep it static. All right. Yeah, and I, I would just add there that 
increasing those percentages, both like the, you know, the, the, the percentage that goes to the bond or the percentage that goes to lenders would then impact the percentage that goes to the player. Um, the idea being that like when this is open, you know, bonds will be compete like talent, um, you know, bonds will compete for talent and and also for card liquidity. And so, um, you know, we want to kind of like allow certain market dynamics to eventually sort of present themselves there. But yeah, you know, as Meta said, for right now, um, we're keeping that static and trying to make things um, at, at least reduce certain opportunities for complications um, until we kind of feel really good about the platform. Yeah. Uh, okay, great. So that's sort of the overview. There's a ton more. Um, the the bonds, if you are sort of looking to join a bond, uh, reach out to them. We're going to sort of give pass it over to them very, uh, very shortly. Um, there are, again, a lot of nuances to using the bond system. So it's sort of on the onus of the bond uh, to sort of um, walk you through it um, and sort of so that you're not being confused when you go to PGS and your card's not there. There are nuances, so um, work with them through it. And of course, like you can ask us questions. We'll have some onboarding docs. Uh, very quickly, what's next for bonds? Um, as mentioned, we are um, going to be putting in um, auto borrow. Uh, we are also going to be adding um, uh, back here in deck tools. We will be including like um, a deck import. So you'll be able to put a deck code in here and then automatically borrow uh, sort of the missing cards um, that you need for the deck. Uh, that's coming. That's, you know, in a few weeks, I, I hope. And then the main thing is uh, we are going to be uh, trying to automate the system. So currently PGS is being um, uh, sort of given a list to um, uh, given a list to sort of like uh, update PGS for uh, borrows for everybody. Uh, but right now on, on Tuesdays, we have to sort of meticulously go through these lists to uh, make sure people own the cards. And um, we are getting uh, quicker with it. I think the last two cycles have been a lot smoother than the, the earlier ones. And so I think where we're at is we're going to start to automate this. And once we automate this, and we feel like there's a um, there's a certain level of of comfort on both um, I guess our side as, as well as parallel side. We will then give the ability for um, for the general community to create their own bonds. You know, so right now these bonds that are uh, sort of are working um, in in the sort of alpha stage. These are the ones that have coordinated and have like sort of built the presence um, to begin with. They, they were sort of demonstrated that they are organized. Um, but that might not be for everyone. You might just want to like create a two person bond to share with your, you know, your siblings or, or your friends. And that's, that's, that's all it, it needs to be. Um, so that's the, the sort of next stage that we want to get at is that people can start to create their own, um, smaller bonds if they so wish. All right. So, uh, with that, um, I'm going to pass this over to, I'll stop sharing and I'm going to pass this over to, um, lunchtime for the first Bond uh, uh, showcase. All right, I'll stop screen streaming. I don't want to go first, Mom. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, don't mess this up, lunch. The pressure. We need to figure out how to share this screen again. Um, I do introduce myself in the beginning of the video, but I'm lunchtime from Midnighters. And I have prepared just like a quick overview of the bond for you. And uh, let's see if I can get this up here. You see my shared screen should be black right now. We see hey, can you see it, right? Yeah. All right. I'm going to grab your popcorn. I'm going to press play and I'll be back on the mic when it's over. Hey everyone, lunchtime from Midnighters here. Today, 
we're diving into the new Bonds platform on Sanctuary, and I'll be showcasing a few key features of it and highlighting some things we really like here over at Midnighters. All right, let's jump on in. When you load into the Bonds page, you'll see the list of the current Bonds on the system. And of course, Midnighters are on top, baby. <laughs> when you click into View a Bond itself, you get greeted with this nice overview with a members list and some additional data, like how many assets there are, the economics of the bond, etc. A nice touch I like is how at the bottom of the bonds banner here, you have links to the bond socials. So if you want to come join our public discord and chat with other midnighters, feel free to do so. Uh, one thing I'm personally looking forward to is when this economic data does start to come in, be able to see weekly and monthly breakdowns of the bonds prime earnings, the top performing members for different time periods. And I just think that's going to be an exciting feature and feature data points to have. Anyway, I digress here. On to the basics. If I click view bond assets, this will load up our bond arsenal. And this is where we can lend and borrow cards and assets with each other. And it's super straightforward, literally as simple as clicking a button. Let's say I want to borrow this Magna Tempest Will Special Edition. I just click borrow card, borrow. And just like that, she is now queued up for the next cycle, which would be next week. And would be available for me to play in parallel for an entire week earning prime for not just myself, but also who is sharing the card. Uh, if I borrow something, like let's say I'm feeling a little greedy about having the special edition, I can just cancel it and that will go back into the pool so someone else can grab it if they like. At the top here we've got filters and if I filter by asset class, this is how you find the keys available in a bond. And uh, again, they work just like cards. If I want to borrow this prismatic key, I just click borrow. And just like that, next week, I will have the prismatic key available to me and get that juicy bonus reward from it. But I'm gonna put that back in the pool again so someone else can have it. Um, so far, this screen has just been everything that's being shared within the bond. If I click on the top right here, this will switch the arsenal over to my personal collection. You can see I'm sharing about half of my cards on this account. And from here, it's just easier to manage what I want to uh, share and not share. So if I click retrieve card here and I've decided I want three hidden vaults back into my own personal collection to use myself, it's just that easy. It's been removed from the pool. Uh, but this is one of the cards that I want to share everything of. So just as easily, I can share more and put them back into the pool. The other key feature for the bond platform is this wish list, And this is easy to add to. You just click the star on a card. Let's show you that real quick. If I click this heavy weapons team, boom, it's now in the wish list. And this is a good way to reborrow cards each cycle. Uh, here at Midnighters, we encourage people who are consistently having to need certain cards within their decks to flesh them out, to utilize the wish list, so that it's very easy. You just have to click borrow card. And then it's just a nice central place to be able to reborrow every week without having to flip through the entire catalog. Uh, we do expect some changes to come to the wishlist feature soon, which will make things uh, even more smooth. So definitely looking forward to that. Uh, one of our key strategies here at Midnighters is going to be utilizing the bond rake. So when you lend and borrow cards, uh, the bond itself does get a small portion of that. But how we are going to use this is to allow us to reinvest into high demand assets like legendary cards and keys. And by pooling our resources in this way, we can strengthen our collective asset pool and it benefits every single Midnighter. And right now, as a bond, I believe we are just shy of 14,000 assets. Yeah, 
at least that's being shared. We do have some accounts that still are not participating in the bond system just yet. So I'm sure our total number is maybe a little closer to 15,000. But even then, uh, we are aiming to grow this rapidly. And by utilizing the bond rake in order to reinvest in the high demand assets, that is our plan. So that's a quick look at how the Midnighters are using bonds to enhance our gameplay. Midnighters is currently in an invite only group focused on leveraging our strong brand potential and we've got big plans on the horizon. One thing that we do have cooking up that I'll quickly mention uh, that utilizes the bond system itself is a more in-depth look at which cards are being actively borrowed so that we can see what we're running low in supply on and as the gameplay meta shifts, you know, we can prioritize adding those specific cards to our pool. This way, you know, we're not running dry on anything before cards become unavailable in the pool itself. And uh, yeah, the, the bond system will give us a very good insight into that. Anyway, lunch out. Yeah, that's that. That's my little video. <laughs> I loved it. Thank that you little, so much. A little fun with it. That was awesome. Yeah. All right, we're gonna jump over to the next group. Um, we'll we'll try to um, save some time for some Q and A. Uh, but that was really fun. Thank you so much for for putting that together. All right, next up, Contagion. Um, I'm not sure if Rai or Orphan is gonna share, but I'm gonna pass it over to one of them. Uh, I'll share the video. Do the honors, man. Yeah, let me uh, try and figure this out. Hey, guys, we're Ryan Orphan from Midnighters. Um, just want to yeah, say baby. hello. <laughs> <laughs> we are Ryan Orphan from Game Seller and Contagion Bond, if you're not familiar with us. Okay. Is that shown for everyone? It sure is. A little mousy. Okay. Cool. And here we go. What's up, everybody? I'm here today to talk about bonds, all the cool features, everything I love. And here's a top 10 list of. Hello, idiots. You've been hacked by Contagion Vault. There is no use in fighting. We are here to destroy Big Parallel with our billions of digital assets and God tier gamer skills. Better how you thought your database was safe from our ransomware encryption spoofing. Think again. You left your back door wide open. Doing our assets only the first step. As we speak, we've deployed an army of tame sized Dyson vacuums to slurp up the universe's entire crime supply. Soon we will monopolize the tribe and active economy, and there's nothing you can do about it. Join US schools. Join our bond. This is only the beginning of our trillionaire princess era. With your resolve and epic gain of moments, we will ruin the parallel of Earth. If you refuse, you will be enslaved and relegated to the prison planet Cartolian 6. What happens there is not good. The choice is yours. Part of our Betty, part of our our vegetable. And there you have it. A top 10 list of everything I love about bonds. See you guys next time. What the? That was so good, dude. What what? Wow. Wow. Did something happen to your computers? That didn't go right. What the hell? Dude, my everyone... screen's flashing. Hello? I, think I just got malware. I, I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> <laughs> Great Blue stuff. Screen. Yeah, the video's over. Tell us a little bit it. about your inspiration, Orphan. My inspiration was to not do the assignment. That's that's the vibe of our bond. <laughs> yeah. We to, never do our homework. To go off the rails entirely. <laughs> yeah, I guess, you know, in a lot of ways, we've wanted to make sure that Contagion feels like it doesn't take itself too seriously. We obviously want to make sure that we have a stable and enjoyable bond that people can take part in and it's super competitive. Um, but we also want to make sure that people feel welcomed and it's speaking a mimetic language of the internet at the same time. 
So I think you, you captured that perfectly, man. Thanks, dude. I just tried to make a top 10 video. <laughs> That's all I did. And then I got virused. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, with that being said, do you, I know you were just sharing your screen. Um, do you have that graphic pulled up? I can also do it if you don't have it at the ready. Yeah, if you can do it, that'd be great. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so with all that being said, we have, I'm going to go live here. There you go. Um, we have very intentionally only onboarded a few core members to test out the bond system. Uh, we only have 15 right now. The intention is scaling that up dramatically. If you look at some of the other bonds, they have many, many more members that have been onboarded to the tool. Um, Contagion was a group effort between uh, Young Capital, Inverse Guild, as well as the game seller, and all three groups came together to form uh, Contagion Bond. And we have some of the biggest uh, TCG collectors in the bond itself, so we haven't even activated all of those individuals. We have our council, council, and then we have a few additional players that were added to that. Um, so we still need to activate those bigger collectors, which we plan on doing. And then on top of that, we want to begin onboarding more players and more content creators. It was always our intent to be the sort of content bond, and we haven't engaged that yet. But with the bond tooling getting iterated upon, uh, now's the perfect time. So if you guys are interested and would like to join our bond, you can go to Contagion Bond on X, or you can message us at seller underscore GG. Uh, I'll put the link in the chat here um, for Contagion Bond. Drop into our DMs. Let us know if you're interested in joining, and then we'd be happy to chat with you because right now it's a private group, and we can open things up as we continue to grow. Anything to add, Orphan? No, I think that pretty much covers it. Cool. And also, I, I should say, the, the tool set itself is incredible. So we're really fortunate and lucky that we get to take part in the initial five groups that get to test this tooling and offer these assets to a super big uh, and growing collection of players. So thank you guys for including us. Thanks, no guys. That, was, that video was worth it. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, all right, let's pass it over to bond number three, Exile. Um, Bounty, you're, you're up. Okay. Wow, what a tough act to follow there, guys. Sheesh. Uh, I'll try my best. But um, give me one second. I actually can't share my screen, it looks like. Um, oh, there we go. Perfect. Uh, there we go. Okay. So I'll just let the video do the talking um, and I'll be around to answer questions after. So thanks, guys. Hello everyone, my name is Bounty and I'm a co-founder of Exile Esports and I'm super excited to be talking to you today about Exile, about bonds and how to get involved. First, let's just jump right into it. We are a competitive esports organization comprised of competitive players, content creators and collectors. As a whole, we're building around the Prime ecosystem. We were started back in 2022 and have been building our group ever since. There are currently 26 full Exile members with over 100 total individuals between members and recruits. Our primary focus is being extremely competitive as a collective. We aim to climb the ranks, supporting our members as we work to conquer the Prime ecosystem. Our current focus is the Parallel TCG. Over the course of the last two years, we have won multiple tournaments, as well as generally earned many top three finishes. We have also produced some of the largest events in Parallel history, including Arden Arena, the $1 million pack opening stream, and Paraland in Paris. Overall, we're looking forward to sharing more about us and telling you about bonds. So jumping over to the organization structure. Besides myself, there are two other co-founders. There's Moe Jack and Joanne. We also have some advisors, including AI Rev and Goldie for player development. 
We also have a coach. Many of you probably know uh, know him as Muka. Uh, we have someone for bond management. That is Dragon Spit. And we also have key lending partners, which include Dingaling and the Big Brain uh, Twins. We also have region-based leads, one of them being Asia, who is covered by Polo, and currently also looking to fill a role that would cover South America and Latin America. In terms of membership, we have two tiers. We have full members and recruits. Full members are contracted individuals with the organization and have specific perks and benefits uh, as being part of the organization. Recruits, which is what most people would be accepted as to start, get access to all our assets by joining the bond, but they can work their way up to becoming full members if they'd like. Within the organization as a whole, there are different roles that can be filled by members and recruits. Some of those being being on the competitive team, being content creators, and being collectors. All of them have specific things that they do to help the organization grow and function. And overall, there can be overlap between multiple roles. Many of our own members usually fill more than just one of these roles. So how can you get involved? Well, we do have a website. It's exile-esports.xyz, which is what you see on your screen right now. Here, you can come check out all our information. Everything I've just explained to you can be found here. We also have a list of our members and what we stand for overall as a, as a group. You can also find our story. Overall, Exile was born from friendship, and it was a community-driven idea that ultimately we wanted to cement through lore. So we created a story within the parallel universe that showed the birth of Exile. You can read the whole story on our website. Now, probably the most interesting piece you're probably all wondering is, how can I get involved? How can I join Exile? Well, we do have a tab where you can apply. You'll, there's a form that you fill out with a couple questions asking about your experience with TCGs and overall your experience with the parallel ecosystem. We're always looking for very passionate members. So feel free to apply and we'll reach out to you. From here, I'll go ahead and dive into bonds and what that looks like and some of our favorite features. Okay, looking at the bonds page, I'm gonna quickly cover the, my three favorite features of bonds so far. And I'm gonna start here with this, this page. Overall, I'm a big data nerd, so I totally love being able to see different statistics and particularly like the way uh, these gauges are displayed. Here we can see total number of members, total number of playable assets. Eventually we'll be able to see how much prime we've earned. So really fun stuff there. Um, if you wanna check this out, I think this is like my second favorite feature is uh, being able to see everyone's different assets that they have in their pools. Right now I just have this filtered to keys, but if I unfilter that, you can see everything else start to populate here quickly. Like you can see what I'm lending out. You can see the things I can borrow. So that's really, really beneficial. And just the search functions and the filters really like features. And then lastly, I think my next favorite is the wish list. So obviously if you're using bonds as a player, you want to be able to find things quickly so you can star all these individual assets and it will appear on your wish list. So when you borrow week to week, you know that you'll probably want some keys. So star those and boom, super easy. You come to your wish list, you click borrow, and you got it uh, ready for the next cycle. So besides that, obviously we love to get the rewards and eventually we're gonna get to experience that, but we'll be able to see all that fun jazz there. But those are my favorite features of Bonds and I'm looking forward to all the new features to come and super excited for Bonds. So again, if you ever wanna chat about Bonds, feel free to reach out. Super excited to, to chat. So thanks again for it. Sick. Thank you, Bounty. Um, is there anything is, else you want to chat, or do you want to um, save it till the end for QA Q and A? I'll save it to the end, guys. Can we just call out the Arc browser, though. Nice. There. Yeah. Shout out to Arc. <laughs> Clean. All right. I'm going to uh, pass over to the the final bond today. Uh, Paragons. Um, flap whenever you're ready. Awesome, thank you. What's up everybody? Flap Jackson from Paragon's DAO here. Uh, so today I'm excited to represent our bond, the Paragon's Alliance. Uh, I'm really excited 
that uh, we're at the stage where we can open up bonds to the masses um, alongside all you other great bonds here. So, you know, I think we're, we're all really going to help parallel scale in a big way. Um, so let me share my screen. Um, I'll show you our video because uh, I think you'd rather listen to that than to me, but I'll be back for a moment after. Welcome to Paragon's Alliance, where your path to glory in parallel begins. Whether you're a competitive or casual player, we'll give you everything you need to excel. As the top holder of parallel cards, we equip guilds and players with cards, keys and avatars, along with exclusive coaching, tournaments and education to help you maximize your prime earnings. Just bring your hustle. Whether you're an individual or want to onboard a guild, We'll support your rise to glory with our unmatched collection of legendary cards, keys, and avatars. And soon to come, a novel rakeback model for leadable performance and a referral program allowing creators and guild leaders to collect a percentage of ongoing player earnings. Our collection has over 200,000 cards and counting, already capable of supporting thousands of players with full 40 out of 40 decks. Access to our best cards is based on your performance, participation, and potential. We're building an automated player credit system to ensure our top players can always access the best gear without racing to borrow. And we equip top players directly with avatars and keys too. Your Alliance Passport will forge your glory on chain. Level up, earn badges, and compete in our internal leaderboards for Rakeback. You'll also gain entry to exclusive educational content, tournaments, and coaching sessions too. Joining the Alliance will have even more perks, like exclusive access to comprehensive guides, videos, and coaching, as well as eventually special perks on priming, which will soon support vital gameplay data. Your choice is clear. As the top holder of parallel cards, we provide everything you need. All you need to bring is your hustle. Whether competitive or casual, we've got you covered. Earn additional rate back based on your bond achievements. Earn more by referring other members. And if you've got what it takes, earn through coaching and creating a content to the alliance. Keep all your tournament earnings we only collect a percentage of rank rank ladder ladder earnings. Paragon's Alliance is powered by bonds accessible on the Sanctuary site. It's powered by the Chanchon Foundation. Bonds makes it easy to request cards from the Alliance. Explore the interface, filter to your views to your liking, or go right from there, or add to your wish list by star area. Any request will be active starting from the next cycle. Check, Check out our site to see all your requests and requests. Or we'll visit your wish list to make it easy to borrow all your favorite cards again. again. Are, you, Are ready you ready to join the Premier Parallel Partnership? On the Bonds page, hit Play Now, now or hit straight, straight to the Paragon's Discord and apply through the Join Alliance channel. See you on the battlefield, guys. All right, guys. So I, um, I, I heard, I saw some reports of uh, audio being an issue. So I hope you got to catch most of that. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll just reiterate a few key points here. Uh, uh, trying to follow up from uh, the, the uh, gaming's David Attenborough uh, free tip scout. Um, but the, we, we see Paragon's alliance being unique in many ways. So we're made up not only of individuals but also of multiple independent guilds. So we're the card partner to Yield Guild Games, to One Turn Tilt, uh, the Foundry, who've been uh, big in the competitive scene so far, and their players play with us. Uh, we supply players that are competitive. We supply players that are casual. Uh, so there's no kind of barriers to entry with Paragon's Alliance. Um, our players' tournament and league performance speaks for itself, but... You know, at this stage, we'll, we will accept anybody who wants to play with us and to help us grow and scale. Uh, we own 
uh, approximately 200,000 cards, uh, including the top collection of legendary cards and keys. And we also supply avatars to top players. So clearly we cater more to players who need cards as opposed to collectors who want to share cards. Uh, so you don't need any cards to join the Alliance. And finally, we're not just a bond, we're a community. So we'll have many uh, exclusive benefits to our players, including tournaments, uh, leaderboard rake back, and gamified experiences, uh, comprehensive education, coaching, and resources from some of the best. And we're also behind priming.xyz, which is the most robust analytical tool for Parallel. And that's soon going to support gameplay data as well. So that's... Uh, that's that's our Paragons Alliance presentation, and you know, happy to answer any questions uh, uh, if we open up to that period. Thank you so much, Flat. Um, yeah, so I think that sort of ends the um, the sort of uh, film festival here. Thank you so much for all the bonds for uh, putting uh, on such a an incredible effort to to create these videos. I, I think uh, what's very clear is that you're you're individual identities um, have really uh, shown. So it's, uh, it was really great. So yeah, we're gonna pass it over to the audience now. If you have any questions to any of the individual bonds or to um, just anything, uh, we can pull you up on stage or if you wanna type it up, we'll, we'll relay um, the, uh, the questions to the specific individuals. <laughs> I think we need to do film festivals more often. I know this, this was takeaway. this was incredibly fun. Yeah. All right. Well, we're waiting for some questions. I do have one um, on the like borrowing and lending side of things. Maybe you guys can provide a little clarity on that. Sure. Uh, so let's say like just for a single card, for example. If we are sharing like 60 of this one card, but only let's say 15 end up being borrowed, um, how exactly does the distribution for Prime work for that? Is it, would it be like all the earnings for those 15 cards get spread out to all 60? Or is there a way to determine like first come, first serve, like a queue of who's kind of getting the earnings? Yeah, so, so let's say that those 60 cards were made available by five lenders, and yeah. then let's just say, for, for ease of argument, that three of those lenders had the, had those card, had the 15 cards um, sort of like randomly assigned. So, so, so out of that pool, when we do assign it, it, it is random. Okay. Um, and, then, and then your claim to that as a lender is essentially just the pro rata share of cards that were borrowed that were your cards okay cool so if you were unfortunately one of the you know kind of two suppliers of that card that you know was not uh randomly assigned uh a, a borrower you you would kind of be sol for that week um but you know like we do think that big enough population size just randomly assigning uh which lender provides the card is is gonna kind of like even out in the end yeah for sure over time it will Cool. Thanks, because just it wasn't like too clear on exactly how that was being handled in that kind of situation. But that's uh, that's very helpful. Thank you. Hey, we've got a question from the chat, guys. Uh, is there tooling in the works to detect when people stop playing the game but still have a load of assets on auto borrow? This is from Ferran Gear. Yeah. So there's um, on those dashboards. Uh, there are. Um, you can see within the members pages, like the, the, the specific like earnings, prime earnings per, I think 30 days and um, sort of total. So there's a sort of like data feed that will update um, and sort of show admins how, um, how active a particular player is. That's one piece. Uh, the other piece uh, to that question is there's um, the auto borrow feature is sort of opt-in. So on the on the weekly, like that player will need to come back and toggle this thing on to show that they're active. It's not like something that you can just sort of set and forget and borrow at infinitum. Um, you, you'll have to come back. And I think the third piece to answer your question is like 
part of this is like, um, again, back to what I was saying about joining a team. I think that like, there's a sort of responsibility from the players as well as from the the admins to sort of, you know, um, you, it's, there's a sort of collegial atmosphere that you you you're not there to sort of screw over your um, your uh, your bonds. So there's there's um, yeah, you, you sort of want to um, not do anything that's sort of malicious. So there are uh, ways of definitely you know let's say borrowing max uh maxing out not using them and those things are just going to be um let's say frowned upon perhaps by by uh by your other uh bond mates and so there's a sort of yeah social dynamic there that the bonds also need to um sort of have to address um or sort of deal with uh eventually I'll just pop in as well real quick. There's there's another product that we've been kind of iterating for a while with uh, the studio team on, which is uh, kind of gameplay a gameplay data API. Um, you know, we've gone back and forth, and I think there's rightfully, um, you know, desire on the studio side to, you know, ensure that their data is kind of like pr proprietary to an extent and shared out as and how they want um, while also balancing the desire of the community to have access to some of this data and so this is something that will eventually come out i can't give an exact time but the idea is that uh, a player will be able to opt in to having their data shared via this gameplay data api and so when this is available um you know we should be able to facilitate uh, bonds or bond ad admins getting access to this and then being able to essentially, you know, write scripts or even like build a product that essentially would allow you to see like, okay, who in my bond has actually like been playing in the last week or last month or whatever and like what are their results. So that is a feature that, you know, we've been going back and forth with the studio on because we do want to make sure that it kind of like balances the needs of both parties there. Um, it's close, and, and once we have an update on kind of providing access to that, you know, to an initial subset of users, and then kind of more generally, we'll, we'll definitely make that uh, announcement. Another question from the chat uh, from Dragonspit. Will the one-week period be shortened at any point? Potentially. Um, I think not for the foreseeable future. The biggest hurdle that we want to clear is getting to the point where everything on the sort of like borrowing side as it relates to getting the data into the parallel game system is automated and running smoothly before we make it more frequent. So uh, it's something that we've chatted about kind of casually and it's something we could do and maybe that will depend on the degree to which people want it to be shorter. Um, but for kind of like the foreseeable future, I would say like, you know, through the end of the year, I, I think, you know, bet on it continuing to be a week. May I jump in with a question? Go for it. Cool. Um, curious what the current release cadence is that you're all aiming for when it comes to iterations and then. What is the what is the goal from moving from alpha to beta, and timing on that? Um, Ooh, release cadence. Um, that's a good one. I'll have to think about that and get back to you. I think I am and Meta. You can you can definitely add to, to what I say on kind of alpha versus beta. I I think alpha versus beta is getting to the point where um we can provide a uh like application for anybody to like create a bond so it's maybe not necessarily totally self-serve um but it's something where you know people can sort of like submit a request to have a bond created for them or you know to create a bond we can whitelist them for creation um and then they can go ahead and sort of do it that way we can you know again scale with management and then kind of like a full release would be making that not application-based, making that kind of anybody can just come in and immediately deploy a bond contract. Um, that's kind of like how I think about the like the biggest difference between kind of like the alpha and the beta is is really access more than 
features. I, I think we have a pretty good idea of like feature sets and then also at least feature sets from the initial group of users. And over time, as we add more users, we will find kind of more things that need, you know, rough edges that need to be smoothed or, or, or more actual features that need to be added. And, and we can prioritize those. In terms of timeline, like, like again, disclaimer, um, but I'll try to throw some, some, um, some, um, some time frames to this. But um, when we last spoke to Parallel, we we're thinking um, a few weeks. So right now, our stage is uh, we're, we're trying to sort of make sure that the earnings, because um, the earnings for bonds are a lot different than the earnings for an individual. Um, so we are trying to iron that out with Parallel and. Um, you know, we have some work to do on that end. Um, but once those that has been checked, uh, Parallel will start to automate. They had sort of pegged that as a, a few weeks, so two to three weeks to automate, so that like once the cycle starts, the process from turning um, from us providing the the bonds list or the the borrow list to to Parallel, and then that getting fed into PGS happens within you know thirty minutes. Uh, whereas right now it's it's a little bit longer, closer to the um, like an hour and a half um, because it's manual. Um, and then once we get automation um, in place, I think that there's we, we're going to sort of let it um, sort of sit for a bit, at least a couple, um, at least two to three cycles to see uh, if nothing breaks. And then we'll uh, start to implement um, or, or sort of um, turn on the switches for uh, players to create their own bonds. And then I think that is what Bu is alluding to is uh, sort of that transition into beta. Thanks, guys. Appreciate the answers. Um, Question from Lofty Puma Meta: Do lint keys get the rake, same rake as lint cards? Yeah. So right now, currently, because keys, um, it, it's just due to how they are sort of treated within uh, PGS. They're they're just counted as NFTs. So there's no like we recognize that some keys have um let's say a lot more uh impact on uh prime boosting than than others but right now the systems don't register um uh, that they are a specific key once uh, at some point the the keys may have like different attributes that will allow the the system to sort of read that but right now a key sort of exists as a an nft and so um what I think we've we've uh, correct me if I'm wrong, view the way that we've balanced this is that if if you uh, if you have a key like uh, the game counts to like you have additional um, NFTs. So I think uh, you know normally it's forty uh, NFTs, but I think if you have a key, it's it's I think um, you know if you're borrowing let's say eight, uh, you'll have more, so you'll be earning a higher potential. Um, is that I, I think that's how it works, right? There's some of that, and then there's also keys that provide like very specific multipliers or effects. Um, but I guess, yeah, like it would be interesting to, I think, maybe think about keys versus cards in the future. Um, but that also requires kind of like a commitment and, and some product work on the studio to do the accounting of that um, as it relates to kind of like lending. And so if the bond system is as popular and successful at driving growth and player retention as I think all of us on this you know chat uh, think it's going to be that becomes it becomes a lot easier for us to kind of like work with them um, to build out products like that I think goal one right here is like get this thing up and running and working um, and then sort of see how reception is see how usage is and then you know we can kind of work together to to prioritize certain optimizations in the future I see um fitch has a question that he wants answered and it's to this open question to all bonds how are you planning to add players both at scale and with quality and uh if you guys don't mind i'll i'll start off with that with midnighters right now we're looking for kind of quality on both the player mostly on the player side at at this current moment because we do have quite a few assets and some larger collectors um i'm sure 
maybe some of you have noticed that we have taken in some top ladder players and some like more traditional TCG pros, and they've been uh, making a little bit of a name for themselves. So that's kind of where we're focused at the moment. And we've had some discussions about like scaling out to a larger player base, but just it's not really on our roadmap at the moment. So. I can jump in. Um, I was actually just writing this out as um, you were talking about it. Um, I think it's a multi-pronged approach for probably all bonds. I know Flaphead just uh, posted his answers in there too. Um, I think content verticals for us are going to be a massive way of uh, raising awareness and getting people familiarized with Contagion. Um, so we do have packages that players can utilize to use our, our brand kit and things of that sort, but also having owned and operated um, channels, new new channels that we want to create with Contagion um, so that we're celebrating more of the ecosystem. Uh, I think events are going to be huge as well. We're thinking about tournaments. We're thinking about Contagion-led contagion events um, that will activate all bonds and players, not just our own. Um, and then I had mentioned it earlier, activating our bigger collectors. We were waiting on them for future iterations of the tooling. Um, but getting more of those assets and cards within our collection so that players can leverage uh, that larger like network of collectibles. Uh, and then la lastly is brand. I think we want to make sure that we continue to separate ourselves um, in terms of our vibe and just our general approach of quality. Um, and I think that's more a, a thing of stickiness. I don't think that that's necessarily something that pulls people to you immediately, but it's uh, hopefully something that keeps people there. Um, so that, I think that's it for us. Contagion sponsored events would be pretty cool. Let's do it, guys. Yeah. Midnighters after party. That would be sick, actually. You heard it here first. So for us at Exile, our, our big focus is on grassroots efforts, uh, particularly in just all the regions that we can get to. That's why we have leads in Asia and we'll be getting one for Latin America and South America because those are all very large communities, both in esports, trading card games, gaming, Web 2, Web 3. Those are large communities. And obviously we have a stable community within Europe and North America as well. So to us, a lot of our ap applicants have been referrals from people already in the bond. And a lot of the people already in the bond are super high quality people. We started with a small core group. I think our full, uh, we started with our full list of exile members at, we think we capped out at 26. All of those are high quality people, both across, you know, what they do in IRL, as well as what they do in the game and for the community. And since then it's, it's really grown. And we truly believe in just grassroots at the end of the day. And that's what gets people interested in, and peaked in wanting to play the game and wanting to discover what's available. So, Luckily, we've also had some really great partnerships with with big lenders and collectors that uh, believe in the vision that we have. So, uh, I think at the end of the day, it's just continuing to 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 reach out to all those different communities and bringing them in. From our perspective, just to kind of tag on um, to to what I shared in the chat, um, so. Uh, you know, we, we're also doing kind of content, education, all of that sort of stuff to to bring people in the doors. I think one of the unique uh, things that we've got is um, our our ability to support full on guilds that that want to bring uh, their their populations in and play. Uh, so guilds that may may have no parallel cards whatsoever, um, you know, they can bring their guild on and and work with us, and and we can support them. So. Um, you know, we I mentioned a few of the partners that we're working with, including YGG. Uh, we actually have nine guild partners um, in the works right now. Uh, so, you know, I think that that's one way we can kind of support an, an inflow of players uh, from you know both Web two and and Web three as well. Awesome. Um, well. Uh, I think this is a good spot to uh, close it off. Um, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, 
it's been really fun. Uh, I think this has been the best vibes of a, a town hall uh, we've had. Um, I think I want to go and watch every single uh, one of the videos again. Um, so I guess for the bonds, maybe uh, where can we where can we see these videos? Like uh, I think we want to sort of showcase these a bit. You guys have put in a ton of effort, um, and uh, we want to be able to blast them out to the community to see which ones they they want to join. So where where can we? Um, are we going to collate them? We could, if we collate them, maybe we can sort of share them on um, uh, social media in a, in a thread or something. Um, uh, if you drop a, a link uh, to them hosted somewhere, we can sort of uh, also uh, put them in the Discord somewhere so that people can um, uh, can access them. Uh, but yeah, maybe we'll we'll reach out. We'll find uh, we'll find a way to get this uh, out to the the community. Uh, other than that, um, thank you, everyone. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, we're we're super excited. Things are starting to really uh, ramp up. Um, uh, we're, I mean, the the sort of leagues and and uh, competitive scene is is really t starting to take off, and bonds are definitely going to be there to um, assist in that. So, um, yeah, we're uh, we're excited. Um, thank you all, and uh, let's let's chat soon. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. A lot of fun. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys.